Hello, another video. Uh, I'm doing here a uh, day's trip to, to, to fishing. I'm uh, gonna do some perch fishing. It's a re remote lake here nearby, which is very nice. Also have been featured uh, on other videos. Um, now, now starts really for me like a nice fishing season. I'm done with uh, I'm done with foraging. <clears throat> Uh, that that season uh, is for me uh, over. I, I know there's lots of mushrooms. I'm just looking at here. There's yellow foot all over, but I'm not going to pick them. I, I always end the the season <clears throat> so that I just collect the 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 amount that I know that I'm going to use. I have uh, lots of uh, in, in the fr in the freezer. Um, bolete uh, mushrooms, chantarelles. Hytnum, Repandum, uh, whatnot, many, many, many varieties, and then I have uh, quite a bit of dried mushrooms. That's that's my fa favorite uh, uh, method of, of, of preserving them. So I have a like easily they will last one year. So I just thought that that's over for me. Uh, but yeah, the season still goes on, of course. But uh, I'm, I'm I'm going to focus now more on fishing. Um, yeah, and I just actually had an inspiration yesterday uh, of doing this video. And I know it's, uh, it's still October, so maybe early, but I just want to do this video anyway, out of the way. And uh, if I'm gonna have a knife that is uh, going to end up in this list, and I actually have a suspicion that one knife that I have ordered will actually could be <laughs> in this list. So I will then in that video mention this video and I put the, the link on the dis description of this video that uh, one knife is being added to this list. But anyways, it, it's not so serious anyways. I just want to talk about the knives anyways. A good, good, good reason to do some random lists. <laughs> so these are the six uh, favorite knives of this year and also uh, includes few of my most used knives also. I will actually start with this one. <clears throat> this is the TRC Classic Freedom. Uh, definitely on this list. Mm, one of my favorite knives of this year <clears throat> and one of my most used ones. Maybe if I would actually uh, Separate from these knives, three uh, best and, and most used knives. This also would probably be on that list. So this is just uh, perfection. This is just plain and simple. Um, <clears throat> and I mean it. I have, I have many perfect knives, and 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 okay, is there a perfection? Blah blah blah. But this just screams for me uh, perfection. This knife. <sighs> There's just something about this uh, when I just take it out of the sheath. It's just oh, okay. It's all the dimensions, all the aspects of the knife are so well thought out. So it's just. I actually yesterday was just uh, I was thinking of doing this video, and uh, <clears throat> I thought like, what are the negatives of this this knife? And I actually really can't uh, find anything. Still, <coughs> it's it's probably not my favorite knife of all. And I will explain uh, in a while why it's not my maybe my favorite, but uh, it's definitely up there, and it's just perfection. So I love the highish uh, full flat grind here. It's very very nice on. Uh, Fishing, uh, food prep, all sorts of things. Um, the handle is gorgeous. It was one of the, the like the, the first things that I, I, I like uh, kind of liked with this knife. Uh, it just fits with this idea of knife. For example, Puko handles, which I also love. It could be that I actually like them even more. But for this type of full flat grind that I use quite a bit for. Also for fishing, it's been really like my main. Uh, this has really been my main fishing knife. Uh, the steel is is wonderful on that, and um, stainless of course, and everything. And uh, it's grippy, 
on the hand. I love the texture. It's not too aggressive, but it's just everything is so well thought out here. I just felt like I feel like they just put like extra effort on every aspect of doing this, including the sheath, by the way. Um, yeah, so no negatives. Um, mm, like the handle, like the grinds, like the steel. The steel hasn't chipped. Uh, I thought maybe the M390 heard that it could be somewhat fragile or something. No issues. I've batoned with this. I've, uh, this is actually great on feather sticks even. So it's just very versatile, fantastic blade to have. Lightweight, unnoticeable. Yeah, so. And then the sheath is one of the best sheath actually uh, that I have. And it's just, the thing is that it just fits, it just fits this blade perfectly. So uh, it's not too bulky, it's not too heavy. Uh, it's, it helps the knife like there's no tomorrow. This is like not going anywhere. They've done so great job on this sheath. It's very sturdy, very, very sturdy. And then it just uses the friction uh, nicely <clears throat> with this long texture at my cart and you push it. It's already very nicely there and then you can do an extra push and you can be almost 100% certain it's not going to <clears throat> drop. So great knives, uh, great knife, one of my most used one also been using this as one of maybe my favorite fishing trip knife uh open countless fishes now with this one uh, yeah the only negative about this is the price really so that i've now uh, maybe there will come negative side from this knife uh, who knows what the but the, the but the price is it's high so and and that's one thing like uh in itself, of course, it's negative because it's a lot of money. So you lose money when you buy this. But there's also one downside that I've actually noticed is that I actually I'm a bit cautious when I use this knife. Like um, one of the first trips that I actually did this with uh, fishing trips, I was fishing on a dock uh, and I, I was opening a fish there and it actually uh, fell through the holes of the dock to the, to the lake. And I had to, I took all my clothes away and, and I, I dived the, <laughs> the knife from the, under the, underneath the dock. It was a bit deep water and it already went like, uh, there was a mud there. So it all, all already was sinking in the mud. So it was actually quite lucky that I even didn't lose this knife. Like I just had it like two weeks. And so after that, I'd be always kind of cautious with this one. Uh, so it's so goddamn expensive. Then everything is debatable. Okay, Bark River knives, they're also expensive. LT Wright knives, they're also expensive. Though. So this is not, I would say, at least in the, here in Europe, it's not, it's the same that I would pay for a nice LT Wright probably and a nice Bark River. So you pay a lot, but you, you, you do get with this extra. So I do feel like, yeah, it, it's costly, but it's, it's really on a, or like a very very high level of, 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 of craftsmanship and, and everything. So, but enough about this. Let's move move ahead because otherwise the video is going to be too long. Okay, I will <coughs> now go to American knife. Uh, it's this one. Maybe this is a surprise for many who have been following my channel. It's the Bravo 1.25. And, and what I mean by it has been, uh, but it could be surprises that I have been actually criticizing Bark River quite a bit on my, on my channel. So in that sense, I mean, and, but I do like this knife. So, and like I said on the video of me bashing Bark River is that I, I do like the knives. So uh, it's, it's, otherwise I wouldn't have bought them. Um, and, and this is a great knife. It really is a great knife. Uh, so Bravo 1.25 CPM 3V. Uh, white micarta, yellow micarta uh, handles. Great, great all-arounder camp knife. Uh, I've been using this a lot, especially during the, just in my garden. So if we have a 
party or something, I just do prepare the fire with this one, prepare the food, foods with this one. Taking it with me a couple of times to to forest shelter. It's it's very nice all arounder. So thick blade, great for batoning. Uh, that's also nice feather sticks. Not the best one, but it does those so very nicely. Uh, so fit and finish, not perfect. Uh, so unevenness with the grinds. Uh, see here, that is a bit uh, higher on the other side. So it's it's it's, it's not perfect, uh, but I use it and it's on my list. And also the steel has held this zero chipping. I've actually abused this a lot. Well, not abused, but I put this to really to, to work. So and no chipping, no no nothing. So great. One thing uh, that I did, and I, I will actually demonstrate in this video with another knife, is that uh, I, I changed uh, the sheath. So I really dislike the, the Bravo, original Bravo sheath. Uh, already in few videos I've been criticizing that. And I, I'm just kind of fed up with that sheath. And I was uh, at my home and I was actually playing with the, with the, with the sheath. So I had, I had actually, uh, we'll actually show just here. Uh, this is also on the list. Uh, LT Ride, Large Northern Hunter, of course. Uh, I noticed that this knife goes very well to the Brisa Nesmuk sheath. And and then and, and this is the original, of course. This is the original uh, sheath for this LT Ride, Large Northern Hunter. And there's actually no problem with this. It's okay. Uh, it helps the knife. Uh, I could do leather forming. I was actually already thinking of doing like leather forming, uh, but then I was just I just randomly uh, tested the sheets and, and uh, uh, tried the Nesmuk 25 from from uh, from Brisa, and this fit, fitted perfectly to that one. Like I thought that sheet is made for this, and I was just, okay, uh, what should I do? So I ordered from Brisa another. Uh, Nesmuk sheet with a, uh, with a uh, fire steel loop and this bushcraft type of sheet, and this is absolutely gorgeous uh, for this. Maybe my most used knives of the, or knife of the year. So I'll be right, large on the hunter. This keeps the knife totally secure. It creates nice friction with this kind of round uh, handle. So it's 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 a bit smaller than the original. So this is this is in my opinion much better than this one. Although this the quality of this one uh, is much better. So the, the the leather is so high quality. Everything here. So I love the sheet. So then <coughs> I was playing also with this knife and tested the LT right, and this fits very nicely here. So there's. Nice friction and uh, like made for the Bravo 1.25. So I can just uh, ditch the, the lousy Bark River original sheet. Okay, but enough about that. So this was on the list. And then I will go <coughs> immediately to, uh, to the large Northern Hunter. <coughs> so definitely on the list. This very well may be the, my most used knife and my favorite knife of the, of the year. I have only one contender <laughs> coming up next, but uh, yeah, this this is gorgeous knife. This is also my most versatile blade. Like no, there's no competition. I never owned a knife that is as versatile. It's so slicey. It does food prep amazingly, so I use it also in kitchen. Uh, I was, for example, I was one week in the archipelago where we have our, our summer house. I basically had this knife all day long on my belt, prepared the fire many times a day. Uh, we, we, we heat the hot water, sauna, uh, fireplace outside, food prep all the time. This is amazing. 
uh, I, have a I have a cousin actually there and uh, he was testing the knife and he was just, God damn, why you show me this knife? I want to buy this knife also. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it has been really great. And it does amazing feathers for, for this type of flat grind. Really nice feathers. I love the curvy, uh, curvy blades. Anyway, they're great for food prep. There's nothing that I don't like. It, it fits the hand nicely. I like the 90 degrees uh, spine, great for, for with fire steel. Yeah, fit and finish, one of the best. This DRC and the Gunny Scandi uh, from Bark River are the best. So, and steel has held nicely. But I've been mentioning this so many, on my so many videos, you can just check, check them out for more uh, thorough uh, review. So, but the Brisa Nesmuk sheet, Fantastic for this, absolutely, much better than the original. Okay, but then we go to the next knife, and this is this is something special. This is now something very, very, very special. Uh, this is immediately on the list, although I haven't actually used this, maybe two days. So, the one and only legendary Tommy Poo. Um, it's such a great finish uh, knife design. Immediately when I got this in the, in the in the hand, I thought, okay, I'm in trouble. I want to have another one also. <clears throat> I also realized immediately that this is going to be a used knife for sure. Although it, these Tommy Pukos, they rather expensive. Nevertheless, this is going to be a used knife. Uh, I will do a separate video of this, like, in a, in a, in a few days. Risto Mikkonen is the designer. Uh, it has the rhombic, rhombic scandi, if you look. Rhombic, fo rhombic form. Uh, it's the best knife for feather sticks already of all my knives. This is insane with, with woodwork. So with carving, um, amazing. It's like hot knife on a butter. Um, does bigger feathers. Uh, you can do very extreme delicate feathers, but I, I will do a thorough video of this and go more in depth, depth with the history and everything. It has a nice, very nice the sheath design. I think this just looks gorgeous. So it's this Kainu, uh, comes from the Kainu area, area of Finland, the North Finnish area. Uh, and a very old design, so snaps, snaps in and not going to go anywhere. Lightweight, looks nice. Everything is this is perfection. This is buko perfection to me. When I got the knife, I thought, okay, I, I, I've arrived home with buko designs. I owned uh, previously one Tommy Pukko. I, I got that as a gift or as a present uh, uh, during my studies or because of my studies uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, but then I moved abroad, uh, so I sold many knives away. So I lived in, a, in Berlin, no use for Pukkos there. So I ended up selling that, but yeah, I wanted to have one back. And immediately when I got the knife, I thought I'm going to buy another one because this is just so comfortable to handle. It's unbelievable. I love this teardrop shape. Many, many Pukkos have it, but this has even better. It's just great. It's great. And it's, of course, totally custom made. So I met the guy in the Pukko festival who made the knife. So it's just one, one, one dude who does everything. So the knife, the sheath, everything. So great, great knife. And to compare, let's say, to uh, the TRC Classic Freedom, uh, this is 100 euros uh, cheaper than this one, so the TRC. So this is cheaper and this is like totally custom made. So it's always interesting to debate about those, those prices. So, but hey, let's move on. And the next one is also going to be Pukko. <clears throat> so this is the Erapu. Uh, 95, Tuohi Tako, great, great knife, 
uh, very uh, the, the 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 value of this is one of one of the highest of all my knives really gorgeous handle it's it's a bit same with the as the Tommy but a little bit less aggressive not as great as Tommy so it's the same nice Buko design but the Tommy is just on another level but this is also nice the the Tuohi the birch bark material is heaven heavenly <laughs> on hand so it's just smooth like silk but then grippy so great great knife the brute forge technique that's great feathers uh, carving everything just just a very nice belt knife and not expensive so 70 euros for this is, is in my opinion great great deal and it comes with a nice sheet with one of the best retentions of all my bukos actually so snaps in and I couldn't force this out with if I would use as much force that I can it's not going to drop so and the fit and finish is also nice it's not on the level of Tommy Buko but for this price fantastic blade so Erapu 95 uh, a, uh, the 80 uh, CRV2 <coughs> steel, so great. And then we go to the last knife, and this was this is a surprise for me. I have to say. Uh, wait a second, I take it. Okay, well, I'll actually show how I use it. I use it beside my backpack here. And I've been using it now for <clears throat> almost two months. So I have almost, al always when I do like days, day trip, I have a, either this Sabotta or a one bigger backpack if I'm going to do a few days overnight or something. But this has been uh, on the side of my backpacks, the Erapu. <clears throat> so let me take it out. So, <clears throat> I wanted to have a leuku because I just have almost childhood memories of leukus. Uh, we used to go with my father a lot <clears throat> to Lapland. He was a kind of a Lapland maniac. We have this saying in Finland, Lapin Hullu, uh, Lapland maniac. So he was definitely. So he had many friends there in Ivalo, Inari, uh, those areas. I've been hiking there. A lot and uh, admired those leukus already because you saw the native people and they have those leukus and I want to have have one as a kid so I had martini leukus but I just didn't use them almost at all I at that at that time I didn't like know even how, what to do with them a bit I don't know it, it was just I thought they were a bit like too like fine they were too expensive to, to really to be used I don't know I, I just didn't use them so but I wanted to have one <clears throat> in my collection so I bought the <clears throat> this Erapu to 210 and I was really suspicious like am I going to really use this so w w what is I, I thought maybe I'm going to do some odd uh, tasks in my garden or something with this but I just want to have one and it's not breaking the bank, so nice, nice, uh, nice the the price quality ratio. <laughs> but I've been really surprised how much I'm using this really, because the thing is that it's not too thick. It, it's it's thick, but it's not too thick. And uh, the handle is from wood, so this is actually quite lightweight, uh, the blade. And uh, it has this survival knife. Uh, element to it so you, you can chop this is nice on chopping uh, the grind is, is very nice on that uh, I, I can baton with this it does many things actually I have it, it even in my video a video of this uh, the main review I'm actually doing food food prep with this so so it's a nice it's a original Nordic uh, survival bush survival and uh, yeah, it, ever since almost like from from mid last summer, I've been just carrying this all the time. So my main like setup have have been this, and then either, for example, the Erapu Puko or G 
PRC a few times, the healthy variety. I very often combine uh, with my mushroom foraging trips also food prep and uh, whatnot. So this is just great for processing wood also. And uh, I just feel I just feel secure <laughs> of having two blades because uh, it doesn't weigh too too much. It really weighs like third or nine, two two third of uh, axe actually of like a trekking axe. So it's re really lightweight. Uh, so nice blade and great on feather sticks also. So and it has this like almost like backup knife idea then. So you have two knives with you. So one belt knife. Now already two days I've been having this setup. So Tommy Pukko and the Leuku. Been very very nice setup. So but if I were to lose another one, this I could survive with this no no problem because this is so lightweight, it does the feathers, it does many things like uh, the, the smaller blades do. So, in my opinion, very nice blade. <sighs> Erapu does a really nice quality price. Ratio knives really uh, 70 euros, like or 79 euros for this is in my opinion. Uh, nowadays with the with the with the knife prices totally okay. Fit and finish really nice. Uh, and good steel once again 80, 80 CRV2. Uh, and comes with a nice sheet also, so no issues. Locks in nicely, not going to drop very easily. Uh, the, the one thing with the Leukos is that if you're buying one, uh, it's not the most ergonomic on the hand. That's just the, that's just the, the truth. But I've kind of, I kind of don't mind really. Uh, because it's okay, uh, the back pommel you can use it to hold it in place. Uh, but it's not, it's not like scrama or something, but there's so many nice things about it, so I just, I just don't really care. And it's, it's nice enough, so I don't really actually have hot spots uh, from it. Um, there's this Leuku of Isak Järvenpää, <coughs> which I'm actually thinking of buying. It has one benefit. It's just this upper part is longer, so it's not totally even. So you have a, a bit more space there in this portion. So this is something which I would prefer. But but anyways, it's it's a great blade and uh, it, it's in a way nitpicking because this is also a nice chopper and uh, but it's not the most ergonomical. But hey, uh, these are my favorite knives of the year and few of them are really my most used ones. The mo most used ones are actually uh, the LT Wright Large Northern Hunter and then the TRC and hmm maybe I actually don't know maybe actually the Brisa Bobtail yeah uh, maybe I should have actually added that that knife also to list. Yeah, I bought the Brisa Bobtail like uh, one and a half month ago, and I've been using that as a main mushroom knife. But it's a bit of a niche, so it, it, but it's great slicer. Yeah, but I've used that a lot. But yeah, but anyways, maybe maybe like the LT Wright uh, TRC. Uh, yeah. Maybe actually this Erapu should be. I've been using this a lot. Yeah, but anyways, who cares? Uh, these are my uh, six favorite knives of this year. And if there is a knife to become uh, in, in this list, uh, I will put the link in this video's uh, description because I have one knife that is coming next week and I have a really, really <laughs> like. Uh, I did say like suspicion that that really could be end up in this list but anyways hey thanks for watching uh, see you later